Hi, I'm Bill Mould. A couple of years ago, I published a video called Nipple and Spoke Threading on YouTube, and this is a short addendum to that one. My thanks to Rick Hurtberg, the wheel fanatic, for some suggestions about this video. Just a couple of review slides first. Here we see two types of bolts that we're going to compare. This might be a bolt that we pick up at a hardware store. This is the uh, shaft of the bolt, and this is the part here where threads have been cut into the shaft. Here is a bicycle spoke that you can think of really as a very long, thin bolt, and there is the diameter of the shaft of the spoke, but these threads are rolled on, so you see that the diameter of the spoke is actually larger where the threads are. Now we're going to look at some very detailed close-ups of nipple and thread engagement, but we're going to look at the nipple in cross sections so we can see everything clearly. So as an example, here is a DT Swiss champion spoke and a Supreme 12 millimeter polyaxial secure lock nipple. And let's look at this nipple in cross section. There it is. Here we see a spoke and a nipple in cross section. That's the length of the threads in the spoke. That's the total length of the nipple. That part of the nipple is the threaded part. This part here is the unthreaded bore. Looking even more closely, we see that we have a total of 19 threads in the nipple, of which 17 are full threads and two are what we call half threads where the slot is on the nipple. The spoke has 21 threads and the nipple has 19 threads. We're going to graph what we see in this picture here. We're going to plot our spoke on this graph paper. There on the y-axis is the width in millimeters, on the x-axis is the length in millimeters, and our thread pitch is 56 threads per inch, which is also one thread per 0.45 millimeters. We're going to be measuring width from the center line of the spoke, which means that I have where the shaft of the spoke is, the spoke diameter of two millimeters, one millimeter on either side of the center line of zero. We will regard these two red lines as reference lines and they are just an extension of the two millimeter diameter of the spoke where the shaft is. And the blue line represents the actual dimensions of the spoke where the threads are. We see here the major diameter, which is the crest-to-crest -crest diameter of 2.2 millimeters. Here is the minor diameter, or root-to-root -root diameter, of 1.8 millimeters. We're going to study these four situations here. Now, these nipples are all lined up vertically, so that in each case, the threads on the nipple start at the same place but we're going to screw the spokes in different lengths and see what the threads look like between the nipple and the spoke. In this first picture, the spoke comes right to the bottom of the slot on the nipple. In the second situation, the spoke goes in farther and goes all the way to the end of the nipple. In the top picture, I have this part of the spoke is not threaded into the nipple and so I have these four threads here where the root or thinner, thinner part of the uh, spoke is not engaged in the threads. The second picture is somewhat better but I still have one exposed thread of the spoke that is not engaged in the nipple. I will submit to you that if you look at situations where a spoke has broken at the nipple as opposed to the elbow, you will see um, a couple of threads remaining on the spoke indicating that that's where the spoke broke 
and probably broke because some of those threads were not fully engaged in the nipple and therefore that was where the spoke was at its weakest. And stress risers occur on these exposed places, not so much because the spoke is a little bit thinner, but it's also because of the fact that articulation angles will pull the spoke in different directions. Here is the third picture where the spoke is protruding maybe a couple of millimeters past the end of the nipple, but this is the first point where all of the threads of the spunk are fully engaged with the nipple. Before we go on, I want to show you a few graphics which are obviously not drawn to scale. Using these graphics to exaggerate the dimensions of the threads, here is my spoke with 21 threads and my nipple with 19 threads. And we're going to screw the nipple onto the spoke until it stops. And it would appear from this graphic that the nipple can't go on any farther because there are no more threads in the spoke. But in fact, with some considerable effort, I can in fact screw the nipple on farther. But when I do, what will happen is that the harder steel at the 2 millimeter diameter will flatten out the threads on the softer nipple. Here are some values pulled out of the Mohs hardness scale, you see lead at the top, 1.5, very soft. Tungsten at the other end at 7.5. Uh, here is aluminum, uh, 2.7. Brass, uh, 3.0. But down here is stainless steel at 6. So stainless steel is considerably harder than either brass or aluminum. It's best to think of these as, as relative values. In other words, stainless steel is much harder than either brass or aluminum. Uh, and think of it that way rather than the exact numbers because those will depend a little bit on the composition of the various alloys. In this very close-up picture, we can see two spokes, this one and this one here, with a nipple screwed on obviously way too far. This is what the nipple looked like before it, the nipple was screwed onto the spoke, and this is what it looked like afterwards. Here is the line that represents where the uh, threads run out on the uh, spokes, and there it is right there. There is our pristine nipple, the threads that are uh, unused. Over here, however, we see how they have been compressed, and if you look inside here you'll see that the picture on the right shows intact threads whereas the one on the left shows that those have all been worn down. And here is the same picture with aluminum nipples. On the right is a unthreaded uh, cross-section of an aluminum nipple and on the left where we have gone way beyond where we should have we can see that the nipples have given way to the harder metal in the stainless steel spoke. So this is probably our best picture here where the uh, spoke goes all the way through the nipple and maybe a thread beyond that. This is a very short addendum to answer a point brought out by somebody who viewed this video as an early draft and he pointed out that if I have a picture that looks like this with a single wall rim, this part of the spoke that's sticking out can sometimes uh, go through a rim tape and cause a puncture of a tube. That is correct, but most of us don't spend much time building custom wheels with single wall rims, so that really is not an issue in the vast majority of cases. Now there are a lot of things going on when you're calculating a uh, spoke length, lots of variables. The elasticity uh, modulus of the spokes, the compression modulus of the rim, for example, the uh, diameter of the spokes, and, and so on. It is possible to calculate the spoke length with as much precision as you want. Most of the time, though, we don't do that. We do our best to calculate the spoke length and allow for those things and hope that we get it right. And then we can confirm if we did by looking at the wheel after the fact and see if we have the right length of spoke. 
So if you are an internet troll and you expected to be entertained by this video, I probably disappointed you, but if you're a wheel builder and you wanted to pick up a couple of nerdy little details, I uh, hope you uh, found this interesting and here's my contact information.